Hi there, and welcome to Red Canary's Crash Course on Microsoft 365 Defender, the video series in which we'll simulate a threat and walk you through how it manifests in Microsoft's XDR suite of services, as well as in Red Canary. My name is Alex Spiliotis, and I'm on the product marketing team uh, here at Red Canary, and I'm joined by my colleague, Joe Savini, a principal Microsoft solution specialist at Red Canary. We're both on Red Canary's cross-functional Microsoft team, a team that spans uh, engineering, product development, uh, solutions uh, specialists, um, you name it, uh, all intended to uh, de improve our delivery of managed detection and response using Microsoft tools and, and better communicate how we do so. Um, and I'll share my screen. Uh, and uh, so in this video, uh, or in this video series, we'll, we'll cover a few things. Uh, so today will be kind of a lighter, less technical uh, video where we provide an overview of Microsoft 365 Defender. That, that, that's the, the XDR suite of services that I mentioned earlier, um, as well as an overview of the, of the threat that we're simulating and that, that will work its way through Microsoft's tools as well as, as in Red Canary. Um, in subsequent videos, we'll dive into the 365 Defender console as well as into um, Red Canary uh, to show you the relevant alerts that appear, uh, the context uh, that appears, and, and how both uh, Microsoft and Red Canary uh, help you make sense of, of uh, the, the information generated by this threat. Um, with that, I think I can hand it over to Joe, um, who can provide a brief overview of Microsoft 365 Defender. Cool, thanks, Alex. So uh, on the screen here, we have some information that might be familiar to folks if they've already purchased Microsoft 365 Defender. Uh, but for the folks that haven't, or if you're just interested in understanding the components a little bit better, uh, what, we, what we see here is basically a breakdown of the XDR platform. So in the attack simulation that we're gonna be going over later, uh, we're gonna touch on each of these products as we move through the attack lifecycle. And we're going to find that each of their strengths kind of play to Microsoft's capabilities to defend against advanced attacks. Defender for Endpoint on the left, you know, needs a very little introduction. I think a lot of folks are very uh, familiar with the next-gen antivirus capabilities, as well as the general overall endpoint detection and response capabilities built into Defender. Uh, a lot of the uh, one of the interesting points uh, about Defender versus a lot of the other EDRs on the market out there is that the agent is actually built into Windows. So if you're leveraging Windows-based endpoints, it makes it extremely convenient to deploy and use. Uh, Defender for Identity, some folks may uh, or may not have heard of this. It's uh, a very powerful tool, especially for detecting uh, on-prem-based attacks, uh, you know, things that are, are trying to, um, things like pass the hash, uh, you know, ticket-based attacks, everything that's kind of on-prem that is very suspicious in terms of, uh, in terms of authentication, you're going to, Defender for Identity is fantastic with those. Uh, Defender for Office 365, you know, the first thing that comes to our mind is usually email, right? When we think about the total XDR stack and where this fits, uh, you know, we're going to think about things like phishing, phishing attacks, malicious links, and there's a lot of individual protections built into Office 365 to defend against those sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's also providing protection elsewhere in the enterprise, uh, things like OneDrive, things like Teams, uh, a lot of areas where, you know, it's extending the capability of safe attachments and safe links uh, to, to, to the greater enterprise and really giving a, a more uh, holistic sort of coverage. So it's definitely not something to be skipped over. And finally, uh, Defender for Cloud Apps. So when you think about uh, when you think about your your organization's data and where it where it lives and where it goes, uh, a lot of organizations are are turning to CASB type products in order to to understand and enforce uh, data integrity and enforce policy. Uh, you know beyond the perimeter of their networks. And so you know. Uh, a cloud access uh, security broker type of uh, type of product like Defender for Cloud Apps is perfect um, for 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 enforcing that type of policy. Thank you, Joe. Um, so now, how how Red Canary works with uh, 365 Defender. So on screen here is is at a high level architecturally how we work with. Microsoft's security and uh, uh, security relevant tools. You'll see uh, on the bottom 
all the tools that Joe mentioned. So we work with 365 Defender, we integrate with 365 Defender, as well as other uh, Microsoft tools that are very relevant to providing detection and response. Um, and so if you're not familiar with managed detection and response, basically we take data from all these tools uh, on screen and we provide um, services and detection and response using the data uh, that, that Microsoft's tools collect. Um, so starting at the top, so first of all, our Red Canary Managed Detection Response is a 24 by seven service. Um, it, it, it doesn't turn off when you go home uh, for, for dinner or you go away for vacation. Red Canary is working around the clock to protect your organization. Um, and now starting kind of at the top with our security analytics. So we uh, investigate alerts sent to us from Microsoft security tools, but we also create our own detections and apply them to uh, telemetry and logs that we collect from, from Microsoft tools as well. That allows us to detect things that, that maybe elude uh, the, the coverage of, of Microsoft's tools. It allows us to kind of apply our own red canary detections uh, to, to Microsoft data. Um, we also, you know, we, again, we thoroughly investigate threats sent to us from Microsoft and threats that, that we detect and we apply proprietary threat intelligence. We have a, um, a threat intelligence team or an intelligence team at Red Canary that's constantly staying on top of, of, of uh, uh, persistent threats as well as emerging threats so that we can better protect um, our, our customer organizations. Uh, we, we, we not only help you uh, detect threats using your Microsoft tools and, and using our own analytics, but we, we really help organizations respond and remediate threats as well. So uh, we have uh, built in uh, orchestration, automation, and response capabilities to our platform. Basically, simple playbooks that, that allow you to uh, set up automated responses when Red Canary uh, confirms that, that there's, a, there's a, a threat in, in your environment. Things like, you know, if Red Canary detects malicious software with a medium or high severity level, then automatically isolate any affected endpoints, ban file hashes, that, that type of thing. Um, and well, we have uh, automated, easy to use automated response and containment um, capabilities in, in, in our uh, offering, we go further than that into remediation. So we have uh, an incident handling team that our customers can kind of think of and, and, uh, as, as threat response experts. So when there is a, a threat, our incident handling team uh, is there to stand with our customer organization side by side and and guide them through remediation as with, with as much uh, with as much guidance as, as they'd like. Um, but we also offer um, you know what we call active remediation, hands-on keyboard support, where our incident handling team goes further than just guiding you through remediation. We uh, our team can actually take hands-on keyboard uh, remote remediation activities on. Um, in your environment, on your endpoints, to really remediate threats as, as, as soon as we, you know, as fast as we can, as soon as we confirm that, that they exist. Alex, uh, if we can, I would like to actually stay on that slide for just a moment. Oh, sure. Um, from a Microsoft product perspective, I wanted to, to point out a couple things for our viewers that can sometimes be a little bit confusing when they're looking at the naming and, and understanding the products that are supported and what Microsoft 365 Defender is versus some of the other products that Microsoft provides. So down at the bottom of the slide here, we have Defender for Endpoint, which we covered, as well as Identity Office 365 and Cloud Apps. But we also see a couple additional products. We see Azure AD Identity Protection, uh, Defender for Cloud, and we also see uh, Sentinel listed up here as well. And I just wanted to kind of provide a brief overview of those products and explain uh, to folks, you know, how they differ, because a lot of them have very similar names and it can, it can be a little bit confusing at first. So when we see Defender for Identity under the, under our identity support, as well as Azure AD Identity Protection, you know, we covered Defender for Identity already. And we talked about how it has an on-prem sensor to really like look at domain controller logs, look at activities and uh, kind of have, has a, a very strong focus on like Kerberos type of activities that occur you know, on inside of like on-prem networks. Azure AD Identity Protection is actually basically an opposite of that, right? So what we're doing is Microsoft is looking at Azure AD that's in the cloud, and they're examining the user identities more closely as sort of like a user behavior analytics. So think of it as detecting things like password sprays or uh, impossible travel, 
uh, that type of thing, right? It's looking more at the logs and the behavior and patterns associated with those logs versus the kind of minutia of uh, the authentication protocols. It's not as it's not as in the application layer so much as it is applying those metrics and analytics to the user behavior itself, right? So that's the difference. Azure AD Identity Protection is doing that user behavior, um, and then Defender for Identity is looking much closer at uh, for, for threats at more of an application level when it comes to authentication on an on-prem environment. Similar to cloud, you know, if we jump over to cloud, we have Defender for Cloud Apps and then Defender for Cloud. Okay, that can get a little bit <laughs> get a little bit confusing at first, uh, but it's actually it's actually pretty simple. So Defender for Cloud Apps is a CASB solution. So that is actually protecting your data as it moves from on-prem to the cloud and allowing you to enforce policy and be aware of who's accessing what and restricting access and basically keeping things locked down outside of your initial network perimeter. Defender for cloud is cloud workload protection that's offered by Microsoft. So that is inside of Azure. You know, if you're running applications and you need to have a sensor installed on that, if you have containerization, you know, things like that that's occurring and you're actually running a cloud app, Defender for cloud is more for you. That's a that's pretty pretty distinct difference. And we see Sentinel listed up here um, just as a kind of a supported technology by Red Canary. Microsoft Sentinel is, is the Microsoft SIM. So that's their, uh, it's not included with XDR. It's a completely separate, completely different product, uh, but it does tie into XDR in a lot of ways. And if you're interested in Microsoft Sentinel, we're going to be releasing a whole separate video series that dives into Microsoft Sentinel, as well as some of the, the features capabilities and the Red Canary support for Microsoft Sentinel. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Great to clarify that. Yeah. Defend, I mess up Defender for Cloud apps and Defender for Cloud probably every other day. So, oh uh, man, At the identity in the cloud ones, it, it's, you know, it gets people, but it, there's, there's some pretty distinct differences for sure in the outcomes there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what we want to do here is just dive into the threat simulation that we're going to be covering. And uh, what we're going to do here is we'll talk a little bit about what, what the attack is, you know, there's going to be an attack that happens. We're going to walk through that attack inside a Defender, and then we're going to walk through that attack inside of Red Canary. And we're going to understand the, you know, kind of the dynamics there of what is Red Canary seeing? You know, what is, what is it bringing to the table uh, in addition to Defender? And then really, how, how do we respond to those threats in Defender? What do they look like when they come in? You know, when the rubber meets the road and you see these advanced attacks and you dive into the console, what are you, what are you gonna see, right? And so it's three phases. Uh, we picked a, uh, a, fairly, a fairly advanced type of attack that's also unfortunately far too common uh, in this day and age. And so this is just a demo. Everything that, that, that has happened here is not, uh, just wanted to, to put that out there that it's not a, a live environment or it's not part of a previous compromise. This is all just a demo environment that we've configured. That, uh, that simulates exactly the way that an attack like this would happen in, in real life. So it is a phishing attack. Uh, there is some account takeover type of activity as well as uh, some malware activity. And so we're going to dive a little bit more into each of these phases and, and I'll kind of explain what happens in those, uh, in those phases. And then, you know, in the next series of videos, we're going to actually dive into the Defender console itself and look at each of these. So it's going to make a lot more sense once you understand the overall attack and the attack structure, uh, you know, what you're seeing inside of the console. So for phase one, what happens is we have a, we have a, uh, we have a user and that user receives a, a very suspicious email, as you can see in front of you. And there's a couple things that are suspicious inside of this email. One is that, you know, we have these bonus payouts uh, attached. And then two is that we have a uh, shortened URL. So there's a couple different attack vectors that we're covering here that the attacker is is really, uh, you know, trying to fool this user with, right? And uh, we can even see that the email was encrypted, and the attacker did that in an attempt to bypass any sort of email security measures. He gave the user the password in the email. Really strange, but you know, maybe this maybe this user is is just too tempted and he's going to click on it, right? So. That leads us into phase two, where the user, unfortunately, he clicks that link, he puts in his password, 
and the attacker gains access uh, by means of credential fit, credential harvesting. It's a, essentially a fake Outlook prompt. It calls, you know, the user tries to log in, nothing happens. Attacker grabs his credentials and logs into the user's email. The first thing the attacker does once he's inside the user's email, he wants to he wants to stay there. He doesn't want to lose access. What if this user changes his password, right? So the attacker creates an email forwarding rule. This is something I'm sure a lot of you, you know, when you hear that, you're like, oh no, I've dealt with this in recent history, you know, count takeover, credential harvesting, uh, email rules. So he creates this forwarding rule. And the idea of this forwarding rule is that it's going to take all the user's email and it's going to send, uh, it's going to copy uh, the attacker so that even if this user resets, you know, their, their uh, password, attacker is going to grab that information as well. And um, that brings us to phase three. So in phase three, you know, the attacker uh, or the user, unfortunately, uh, is silly enough to download that malicious binary. Uh, that's attached. Now that it was a zip file. So the user has to download it to their endpoint and they unzip it using the password that was provided inside the email, right? And once they do that, uh, there is a bonus payout uh, HTM file. So there's like a HTML file inside of, inside of that zip file that the user believes to be something to do with their bonus payout or some sort of, some sort of amount. So they want to open it and they, they open that document. And when they do, um, <laughs> there is a, there's a backdoor that's smuggled inside of that HTML file. And it's, it's basically base 64 encoded binary that's included, uh, inside of a variable inside the HTML and it executes in the user's browser and executes in the context of the user, uh, giving the attacker access to the user's machine. And then, you know, the attacker uses that access to do some limited lateral movement and persistence activities inside of the company's network. And so we'll be covering those activities in more detail inside the Defender console. We'll be able to see exactly what was detected based on, you know, with this attack scenario. We'll see what wasn't detected, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get a good idea of how Defender timelines that activity and how Red Canary timelines that activity. So yeah, that's thanks. that's thanks. sort of a preview for things to come. Yeah, thanks, Joe. And again, like this, uh, you know, for for our technical viewers out there, like this is a technical video series. We promise. We just um, we uh, not everyone is aware of Microsoft 365 Defender or, or you know uh, even Defender for Endpoint, right? Some people are totally new to the game, coming into security for the first time, or never having used these Microsoft tools. So we thought it was important to kind of set the stage. But um, as Joe said, in, in in the next videos, we'll be in the products showing you um, how data from or, or how these tools collect information and, and process information based on the threat that, that we're simulating. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on the, in the next video.